Am I recognized, Mr. Chairman? You are recognized, Thank sir. You. Dr. Burnett, um, is smoking tobacco bad for you? Absolutely. Cause cancer, right? Large amounts. If you smoke marijuana, does it, are the products of combustion from smoking marijuana, or is that carcinogenic as well? You know, there have been a lot of studies on this looking for exactly this issue, and it's very, very unclear relative to the outcomes of those studies, particularly around lung cancer. You're kidding cancer. me. You, I'm you not. smoke tobacco, you can get cancer, but if you smoke marijuana, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about it. I wouldn't go as blanket a statement as you would, but okay. I would say that the research is not as clear as it is for tobacco. So you think smoking marijuana is innocuous? I didn't say that either. Okay. That's my next question. Okay. Um, the Food and Drug Administration has determined that high, uh, marijuana has a high potential for abuse and does not have any accepted uh, medical use in the United States. Do you agree with the Biden Food and Drug Administration? Well, I think that the Food and Drug Administration said that before the Biden administration, but, but it's still on the books, right? It is, and I think that they probably should reform, reform that idea. How about, okay, you, um, how about the Surgeon General? Um, the Surgeon General uh, Jerome Adams issued an advisory pointing out, as Mr. Berenson said, that the percentage of concentration of THC has gone up dramatically over the years. And he warned about the uh, harmful effects of marijuana on the developing brain. Uh, is that a concern of medical science? I do believe that there is concern relative to youth use, but I would say that when we're talking about the issue of potency, you have to understand relative to potency that it is going to change the user's subjective use of the substance, right? And so if we're talking about the increased percentage of THC in cannabis, then what probably is going to result is that most users of that drug are going to reduce the total amount of consumption that they're using in any one setting. Well, the user doesn't know what they're, what they're consuming, do they? Well, that would be why we would need to regulate it so that we can provide appropriate testing to be able to inform users of what it is that they are doing. Chief, as a practical matter, at the state and local level, simple possession of marijuana is not being prosecuted today. Is that right? It's uh, being... It's being prosecuted, but by way of citation. It's been decriminalized for, a, I think. You get a, like a speeding ticket, I guess. Yes, that's correct, sir. And so, um, as I understand your, your position today, are you, are you referring to simple possession, or are you referring to any possession of uh, marijuana, including people who are engaged in the trafficking of marijuana? I was talking about the aggregate, Senator. Uh, more recently, you're absolutely right, 10 grams or less in the state of Maryland. It's only, you can't arrest anymore. You have to issue a citation. It's not, you know, not entered into the criminal justice system, but I was just talking about the evolution of it. I remember the days where one joint would get you incarcerated. I remember, I remember those days, but what I'm trying to understand is when you're talking about decriminalizing marijuana, are you talking solely about personal possession or you're talking about the business of selling marijuana that whether it's a cartels or whether it's some licensed cannabis um, dispensary? I favor just uh, de decriminalize. I mean, legalizing it and have uh, the government tax it, much like we do alcohol and tobacco, and then some of the proceeds from those billions of dollars, billions of dollars that we could potentially uh, garner f from taxes go to education programs. No, I don't want 12-year-olds to smoke marijuana. I don't want uh, uh, kids to become engaged. I don't want it to be a gateway for. Uh, children to use drugs, but I also don't want it to be a gateway for the, this, this, this uh, mass incarceration. So if we could take those dollars and reinvest and regulate it, that would hire, create job opportunities it, on so many levels. And so that's what I'm in favor of. That would free us up to do Are address- Are there any the other drugs that you would uh, decriminalize? No, sir. I, I, right just, now, I'm not prepared to say just, that. Other just than, marijuana? Just marijuana, yes, okay. yes sir. Um, Mr. Berenson, um, I think you alluded to the fact that uh, vaping and use of e-cigarettes is pretty, uh, pretty widespread among uh, young uh, adolescents and the danger of um, consuming concentrates of THC that uh, are vastly higher than what you would consume if you were smoking the, uh, the plant. Um, is that a concern of yours? Uh, yes, I mean you, you can smoke a lot of THC with flower cannabis, but it's much easier with the with the vaping product. Um, by the way, I, I would agree with Dr. Uh, Burnett that uh, there's not very good evidence that cannabis use uh, leads to lung cancer. 
surprisingly. There's, it's very, there's not a lot of evidence of that. Well, I just remember uh, spending a lot of time and money saying uh, that uh, smoking tobacco was bad for you. Now we're going to say smoking marijuana is innocuous from the standpoint of carcinogen. Um, it causes enough other problems. My, the, um, Mr. Cook, my experience and observation with the drug cartels is that they're pretty much commodity agnostic. Um, they'll sell you anything that you will buy. Uh, why is it that even in those states where, uh, where marijuana use has been decriminalized or legalized that the cartels continue uh, to engage in that business? And I assume, as you said, comes along with it, uh, violence, um, protecting territory, market share, a lot of this connected to street gangs that are the distribution network for illicit drugs in the United States. Could you uh, explain why, if it's legalized in these states, that the cartels and these street gangs would continue to be involved in the business? Uh, absolutely, and thank you for the question. The, the, the reality out there is exactly what you just said, and that is we're not putting the cartels out of business. What we've done in states like California and Colorado especially is put them in a position where they can now move their manufacturing, that is to say grow operations, here to the United States. Because under the, under the cover of uh, decriminalization and, and less emphasis on marijuana, they can now operate huge uh, manufacturing operations. That saves them the cost of smuggling across the border. That's the, one of the most significant risks the cartels have. You've taken that away from them, and now they are they move into the state, they then compete with legitimate businesses who we had hoped to promote, and they, they, they compete with them at an unfair level because now they're not paying taxes, they're not uh, complying with license laws, they're not complying, complying with labor laws, and now they're out there distributing uh, the very same product they were at a cheaper price, and where do you think consumers are going to go? Consumption is up, so now they have an expanded market and a reduced cost. At the same time, the other, th the other element of what you just suggested is happening. Down in Mexico, the resources that they've saved from not growing uh, marijuana have now been shifted to manufacturing methamphetamine, heroin, <clears throat> and fentanyl. So we've, they, we've given them a double win-win. They're better off in the United States growing. They're better off down in Mexico with, with, with in increased resources to address, uh, to, to manufacture and distribute other drugs. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I can ask unanimous consent to uh, make part of the record a report by the U.S. Senate Caucus on International Narcotics dated March 2021. This is a, entitled Cannabis Policy, Public Health and Safety Issues and Recommendations. I'd ask unanimous consent that that be made part of the record. Without objection, and Thank before you. we go to Senator Whitehouse, I also want to put into the record uh, with unanimous consent, uh, number one, a study published uh, titled Impact of Marijuana Le Legalization on Crime Reduction is being underestimated as a study files. And I also want to put into the record uh, the Uniform Crime Reports UCR data from 2007 to 2017, look, using a difference in difference analysis and the scientific method uh, to, uh, to look at the effect of recreational marijuana, marijuana legalization on clearance rates and that in the state of Oregon studied, it's shown to have an impact on the ability to clear other violent crime. Without objection, I'll enter those into the record, and now I will move on to Senator Whitehouse.